Hey everybody and welcome. Today I have another PCIe Enterprise SSD for you that you can pick up pretty cheaply used. This particular model is a 6.4 terabyte SX300 made by Fusion IO which got bought out by SanDisk which got bought out by Western Digital. Here you can see we have the 6.4 terabyte SX300 on the right and a 3.2 terabyte IO scale on the left. If you look at the design you can see that They've gone away with the uh, configurable slots uh, for the memory chips. So you can see here, right, this card has a little bit more depth to it because there are these uh, slots on the bottom that these uh, cards can, uh, or memory cards can slot into. And instead, all of the memory packages are soldered directly to the PCB on the SX300. Both of them have heat sinks still over the controller. Um, personally, I think the older IO scale design looks a little bit better, but it's really immaterial as to the performance. If we zoom in over here on the SX300, we can see that once again, they're using Micron flash memory. And it's not until the SX350 that uh, SanDisk and Western Digital started using their own partner's uh, flash memory from Toshiba, which is now Kyoxia. Looking at the back of the card, we can see some of the identification stickers. And if we zoom in on that, we can see that uh, it is in fact a model SX300 from the IO memory line, and it is 6.4 terabytes. Also, since this is branded as SanDisk and not Fusion IO, we know this particular card had to have been made after the 2014 acquisition of Fusion IO. So let's go ahead and pop this thing into the machine and see what it does. As you will notice, looking at the key at the bottom, you will need at least a PCIe 8x slot to put it in. Okay, now that we've got the computer fired up, um, we're going to have to actually uninstall uh, the Fusion I.O. drivers and software if you have an older model like that 3.2 terabyte I.O. scale. Installed. So you can just go to your uh, you know, Windows uh, uninstallation and then search Fusion and you can see the software right there. This is actually the software for the SX300. The uh, IO scale 3.2 terabyte one will be VSL3 um, because officially the VSL3 and VSL4 devices can't be on the same machine. Now some people have been able to get them to work but uh, I'm not really going to go into that just because it's not what's officially supported. Next what we'll have to do is we'll have to download the drivers and software for this SX300 and uh, you'll have to go to the Western Digital uh, Enterprise software uh, site. Um, if you don't have an account you will have to make one but it's free and you know not very difficult so just go ahead and do that. And then uh, once you get in on the left here you'll have to select the product so for this it's an SX300. We'll select our OS which I'm running Windows and then the release version, just pick the latest version. And then uh, it'll show you all the downloads available here. So we have you know documentation, software binaries, firmware. The documentation is handy just because uh, you know it tells you everything about the drive itself if you want to learn about it, such as like the uh, thermal limits and when it will throttle, etc. Um, and also uh, some of these guides have all of the different uh, terminal commands. Uh, that you can use to initialize the drive, wipe it, uh, you know, do the PCI slot power override and whatnot. Um, for the software binaries, uh, just go ahead and uh, pick the package one, not, or you could pick the zip one, doesn't really matter. And then same with the firmware, if you plan on updating firmware, you can select that. And then over here, then you can go ahead and download it to your computer. Once that's downloaded, go ahead and run it, and then Yours will say install and uninstall because I've already installed it. And then run through the wizard and install the software and driver. After the software has been installed, uh, I recommend doing a full shutdown and then turn on. Some people have uh, said they've had issues um, getting the drive to be recognized if uh, they had already popped in the drive, installed the software, and then immediately tried to go into the uh, command line terminal and uh, initialize the drive. Okay, once you're ready, go ahead and open up a command prompt and make sure you've done this in administrative mode or administrator mode. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and just like the 3.2 terabyte IO scale, we're going to use some of the same commands to check out the device. So uh, to start, I'm going to use FIO status A to see all of the characteristics of this drive. So if we look here, yeah, it says the driver's loaded. 
you know, I can see my serial uh, serial number of my particular device. It says it's an I/O memory, it's telling me some of the stuff about my PCI bus. Uh, the power limit is only 25 watts or 24.75 uh, because I haven't done the override. Um, Oh, interesting. It says that I have a error or warning on this device to see, so I'll scroll down and see what that's about. Um, looking down here, I have firmware 8.99 from 2017, so uh, February 22nd, 2017. Not terribly old. Um, let's see, it's running at about 52.66C, which is uh, actually really close to what the uh, I.O. scale, the 3.2 terabyte, was idling at. I think that was either 52 or 51C as well. Um, oh, here we go. Rated petabyte writes. So instead of the 20 petabytes that the 3.2 terabyte I.O. scale can be written to, this one has two additional ones, so 22. And it looks like I got a pretty healthy unit with 91% remaining. So once again, this will probably last longer than, well, the rest of this whole machine. Um, and as we look down more, ah, okay. So the warning I was getting earlier was that the bandwidth of my PCI slot isn't optimal. And that's because on this uh, ASUS Tough Gaming X570 Plus, um, the second by 16 uh, slot or physical by 16 slot is only PCI is only uh, 4x uh, electrical, but that is. Um, PCIe 4.0, so I don't know. We'll see when we benchmark this thing how much of a hindrance this really is. So the next thing we need to do is enable the 75 watt override so that the drive can get full power if the PCI slot you've put it in supports it. And since I put this in a slot meant for a second GPU so you can run Crossfire G uh, graphics cards, I know this slot can support 75 watts. So the first thing we need to do is uh, to get the drive serial number and you can use FIO-status to do that. And then once again, that's going to be over here in this uh, upper right hand area. So take a note of uh, what that is. I'm just going to type it somewhere else. Mine was 1643D052. And then um, we can use the same command that we used uh, for the 3.2 terabyte IO scale to do that override. Uh, it hasn't changed between these software versions. And that is going to be FIO hyphen config space hyphen P space caps FIO underscore external underscore power underscore override. And then we will enter that uh, serial number, which was 1643D0052 and then colon and then so here's where it differs from the earlier IO scale uh, with the IO scale I would just enter 75 and be done with it um, looking through the documentation for the SX300 it seems like with this driver and software version um, this has to be in milliwatts so instead of 75 it's going to be 75,000 and there you go, it says uh, the override for this device serial number is now 75,000. Um, to apply this, we will have to reboot the machine. So I am going to go ahead and do that right now. Then we can go ahead and recheck our FIO uh, status dash A and see if that actually applied. Okay, we are back up after rebooting the computer and once again I've launched my command prompt with administrative privileges and now I'm going to use FIO hyphen status space hyphen A to see if that power override worked. And uh, you can see here PCIe power limit threshold is now 74.75 or 75 watts, so it was successful. Now we have to initialize the drive for Windows so we can actually use it. And uh, go ahead and open up your Windows Disk Management. When you do this, you'll get a pop-up saying, hey, you have a disk that's uninitialized. I have uh, exited that so I can show you this. And uh, this is the IO memory uh, disk right here, disk 6. So now we have to cl click over here on this left-hand box, right-click, and initialize it. So we'll make sure it's disk 6. We want GPT, hit OK. So now it's initialized, now we have to go over here and partition it. So we'll create a new simple volume and just run through the wizard. And I think I am going to call this drive S for SanDisk or SX300 or something of that nature. I guess I could do W for Western Digital too, but too late. And then uh, I'll call this what it is, IO Memory SX300. 
and just do that. Okay, so that has now been initialized, and if I open my My Computer, I can see the drive down here. Now we can get to the fun part and see how this drive benchmarks. And I'm going to keep a uh, terminal window open so I can do uh, FIO status and uh, see what the drive's temperature is getting up to. Okay, so our benchmarks are done, and here are the results. Um, looking at the FIO status, it looks like the max temperature the drive got up to was 70C. Uh, this drive will start throttling at 78. So maybe for the summer, I may need to consider getting some active cooling for this. I know some folks uh, have gone out and put uh, PCIe slot coolers next to it in order to get a little bit more airflow. Um, seeing how this uh, result stacks up against the previous drives. Here are the previous benchmarks I ran and uh, when I had the Fusion IO scale right here, here you can see here are the different uh, speeds of that drive. So this uh, 6.4 terabyte drive is faster compared to the 3.2 drive and I'm also kinda wondering if I had actually put this on a by 8 electrical slot if these numbers would be even larger. But even still, this is still an improvement from the 3.2 IO or 3.2 terabyte IO scale. So still a definitely good result because I was more than satisfied with these results. So overall, great buy. Um, I was able to get this for exactly twice the price of the Fusion IO scale. So 3.2 terabytes to 6.4, perfect scaling. Eh, what's to complain about?